Kelly and the Investment Guide. As you know, we focus on helping people build wealth. And we think of taxes as something that will inevitably reduce your wealth. But if you make the wrong moves, it can actually destroy your wealth. So what are the things you see people doing that destroy wealth, that, that impair their wealth more than they need to? I think one of the things is to be afraid of tax consequences. I think that's a huge one. I think people are afraid of, and capital gains is a big one. You always hear people saying, you know, they don't want to pay capital gains, so they hold on to an asset that maybe isn't worth holding on to just because they don't want to pay the tax on it. Um, or they don't make a business decision that maybe they should do because they're paralyzed by the tax consequences. So I think a lot of times people, it's kind of the throwing good money after bad. They'll make a decision, but then they won't make the second piece of it because they're worried about the tax piece. And I think that it's important not to let the tax tax part of it rule, you know, your decisions, your financial decisions. I think taxes are an important consideration, but I think sometimes people get so wrapped up in the, you know, not wanting to pay 15% on the capital gains that they miss out. And the same thing on the estate side, I actually see it a lot in the estate side, which is people making silly mistakes on the state planning because they don't want to pay tax or they don't want to pay estate taxes and then maybe it impacts their income taxes. So I think you need to make sure that when you're worried about how you're going to spend and your tax planning that you think about it in the big picture. As an individual who's worried about being audited, right. how do you avoid becoming a target of the IRS knowing that they only pick a certain number of people to audit? You know, I think you can't ever, ever shield yourself from ever being a target because I think, you, you know, the, the IRS criteria is somewhat of a mystery, but there are some things that you know that are going to make you a target. And one of those is if you're a Schedule C filer, for example. Schedule C is notoriously, if you run a business, the IRS is going to look at you a second time. So, you know. And a Schedule C if you're, you run it as a sole proprietor. Right, if you're, if you're a business owner and you're filing as a self-employed person on a Schedule C. And I think, you know, it's common sense advice, like don't be piggy. You know, when you're taking deductions, think about how they look. Um, the IRS is going to wonder why you're still in businesses every year. You're, you know, claiming that you don't make any money, for example. So I think be smart. I'm not saying, you know, don't claim everything you're entitled to because I think it's important not to under deduct. But I also think you need to think about well, how the IRS is looking at it. And if you're, again, Schedule C person, the IRS is assuming that you're in business to make money. If every year you're claiming that you're losing money, you know, it makes you a target. Same thing for rentals, real estate, Schedule Z. You know, if you're running a real estate business and every year you're claiming a loss, um, while you can claim losses for real estate, you don't want to claim one every year because, again, the IRS is going to look at that and wonder why it is that you're still in business if you're losing money, you know, constantly. Um, if you're claiming deductions that are disproportionate to your income, whether it's charitable donations or, you know, medical expenses, again, the IRS is going to look at that because one of the things you have to keep in mind with, with respect to tax returns is that it's all numbers to the IRS. They have formulas. They're looking for patterns. And, you know, the, the assumption is going to be that most people's income doesn't vary. Most people's deductions don't vary. And that, you know, at some point you, you can't, your deductions can't always exceed your income or you can't live. And so those are the kinds of things that the IRS is looking at. Like they want to see return tax returns that make sense, ones that don't claim excess deductions, and ones that, that don't, you know, swing wildly from one year to the next, you know, taking into consideration the economy, those kinds of things. Are you expecting big changes in the tax law in the next few years? And if so, what should people be doing to position themselves for tax reform? I think we're going to hear a lot about tax reform in the next few years. I think we're going to hear a lot about big changes in the tax code in the next few years, and I don't think any of it's going to happen. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of the same kinds of things that we've been hearing to date, which is I think there'll be small swings. I think there might be some, you know, some play with the estate tax. There might be some capital gains talk. I think that uh, no matter, you know, which party's in power, we're always going to hear about things that we could do differently. I don't expect there to be major tax reform. I think there should be. I don't think we're going to see it. I think it's just too political. I think the IRS is probably beat up enough these days. Um, and I don't think that Congress actually has it in them to do full-scale tax reform. So um, I don't expect to see that. I, I think that any time that people start talking about tax reform, taxpayers should take note and they should be cautious and they should think about how they could make changes. But I don't think that should equal going out and making changes until it becomes a reality.